so I saw something this morning on one of the reels on social media that, you know, it caused me to really, I've been wanting to say something on a video like this for quite a while, but I didn't know what I wanted to say. I didn't know what it was I wanted to say. And finally, when I saw this reel this morning, I knew what I wanted to say was about integrity in the sport of hunting and even fishing. This morning, I saw a reel that it was a person using a vertical bow that where the stabilizer goes has something that was affixed that screws in where the stabilizer goes. That that other side was in a tripod. So when the person came full draw, well, right here was stable. And that right there, I, I questioned myself right there. I was like, now, okay, that to me, this is a little too far. This is a little bit too much. And then I started asking myself about, well, well, if this is too much, G, what else are you doing? Or what else, what, what in your life are you doing for hunting that's a little bit too far? So it got me to questioning, you know? Um, so what's your thing, guys? What, when it comes down to integrity, do you have that Maybe a little bit too much. I mean, it's it's human nature. It's from the beginning of time. That's how the wheel came into play, right? We're we're people. We're a being that we want to achieve a goal as fast and easy as we can. That's who we are as people. We ain't ever going to change it. So that's how we get from the wheel to the automobile. Okay. We want to achieve a goal as quickly and easily as we can. I'm not going to say we're lazy, but we're getting that way. And now it's getting to the point, you know, of it's bad, in my opinion. So this is, so you're like, what's integrity? Well, the the integrity, and I looked it up, okay? The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles that you refuse to change. So, with me, I love to vertical bow hunt. That's my thing. I love, I don't want to bow, I don't want to crossbow hunt. That's not my gig. Um, I think it's a little bit too much for an able bodied person. If you're in the gym as an able bodied person, you're, Brent, you're bench pressing 305 pounds, you're squatting close to 400, and you're shooting a crossbow. Read that definition, you know. And people will say, well, 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 what about vertical bow hunting? There's so much on that. To that, I say this. My brother-in-law is one of the best dirt track racers in North Louisiana. The guy can bowl 300. I'm talking about he has got the skills that when he sets a goal, he's very, very good at reaching them. Never hunted a day in his life. Last year, through work, he had an opportunity to go with some of his work guys to Illinois. With, a, with an outfitter and going to go hunting. But it was archery only. Well, he's not a bow hunter. Never shot a bow. My dad pushing 70, and he's got a crossbow. He's got a raven. So my brother-in-law goes to my dad, and he says, hey, I've got this opportunity. Can I use your crossbow? Dad's like, oh, absolutely. Let's go out there and shoot. They get set up in the first shot. I mean, first shot. Right down Broadway. Second shot, you know, they shoot a few more times before he leaves. My brother-in-law shoots his crossbow at a hundred yards at the target and hits the bullseye. Do that with a vertical bow. There's your difference. That's why people with vertical bow hunting say crossbow hunting is easy. The, the learning curve is much greater with a vertical bow. And then if you want to get even farther, grab a traditional bow. I got a self bow in my office that, let me tell you something, because if you get good with that self bow, that long bow is like cheating. And then you get, put that up and go to the, to the vertical compound by Matthews or Hoyt or PSC. But there you go. You got to figure out integrity wise, where are you at? Because Right now, in this country, we're losing hunters every single 
today. I get it. My people want to use crossbows. Crossbows save you time on getting prepared, learning your trade. All you do is pull it out, sight it in, and about a week before hunting season, go out there, shoot it, make sure it's still on, and you're ready to go. You don't have to spend that time getting good with your vertical bow like you do a crossbow. I mean, I'm sorry, a crossbow like you would your vertical bow. And I get that. But at what point are we sacrificing the integrity of the sport? I'm not telling you where to do. I'm just asking you, where's your your line of integrity? And see, that's a, that's a hard thing to gauge because if you set it too low, you're watering down everything. If you set it too high, now it's an unobtainable goal. There's a sweet spot in there. I, I when that when I saw that video, that guy using that vertical bow that was affixed to a tripod, I was like, we've gone too far. And don't look to the state to change anything. People this morning, I saw one guy, he made the comment that the reason they're doing velvet hunts is a money grab so that the state can make money. You're dang right they're trying to make money. You know why they're trying to make money? Because we're losing hunters every year. They got to do something to get people out there hunting. It's not necessarily ticket sales. They're trying to get people into hunting because if we lose hunters, we will lose hunting to all together. Whatever it takes to get somebody in the woods, I'm for. But at some point, we almost have to say, hey, man, come on now. The state ain't going to tell us what we can and what we can't hunt with. Your moral values and integrity can. I applaud what MLF and the National Professional Fishing League and Bass have done. They've taken a stand on forward-facing sonar. Do I think it's right? That's not for me to say. I can't tell them what's right. They can only figure out what's right for them. But I applaud them for standing up for something they believe in. That's what I'm asking y'all. What do you believe in? Where's your moral and ethical line set? You got to set it somewhere. Because if you don't set a line, you're going to, man, you're going to be out here shooting from a drone next. I mean, what you're going to do, you're going to set up a camera at your deer stand that has a gun that's locked inside your deer stand that is safe and nobody can get to. And you can sit at the house and watch it on a computer while you're drinking your coffee during your work and you're watching your shooting lane when a deer walks out, you take that. I mean, how far are we going to go? Because let's be honest, that sounds a little far-fetched to have a remote setting with your, where you can control your gun and camera from the house. But hey, folks, think about how far we've come in just the last 10 years. That's not far off. Now, is that ethical? Where's the line going to be drawn? This season, figure it out. Find your spot. I'm not asking you to bicker amongst each other. Please don't do that. That's not what this video is about. I just want to get your thoughts. I want to get you, not get your thoughts. I may turn off the comments on it because I know we're going to get roasted. But I'm just trying, I'm just challenging you to think about it a little bit more. Yeah, we want to be successful. We want to be, we want to be as successful as we can in the woods, but at what cost? What cost? Where do we draw, where do we draw the line? Y'all have a good week. Get ready for deer season. I want to say something about baiting, but I'm not. It's a story for another day. Y'all have a good one.